Welcome to Precision Agriculture in the Southeast. Hello, I'm your host, Mark Hall. I'm an Extension Specialist with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. And with us today we have Dr. John Fulton. John is an expert on this precision agriculture stuff. It's just amazing what all we've been talking about in these other lessons, John. I thought I knew a little bit about it, but this is really ground changing, rule changing, that everybody needs to be adopting this and not be intimidated. A lot of times old guys like me, all oh, this new technology stuff is scary, but this is a must. I mean, this is going to be like email or anything that if you're going to farm, you're going to have to do this. And in the case of some of this that we've already talked about, as we mentioned, it's already come as standard options on the implements, the tractors, the applicators. It's it's integrated into the machines and in the farm equipment today, and that just kind of highlights how the benefits, but uh, how much it's going to, the importance of it uh, as we go into the future. But uh, Mark, we're going to talk a little bit about automatic section control in this lesson. Uh, some other terminology you hear is auto swap, clutches, there's a lot of things that, uh, some other terminology, but let's, uh, for our lesson today, we're just going to call it automatic section control uh, technology. So with that, kind of stepping back and thinking back where we were uh, talking about an introduction and, and trying to, to farm, these are uh, real conditions, a uh, couple field boundaries here for the south. Uh, we've got these irregular shaped fields, uh, got them small to large as we had mentioned prior, you know, 20 acres to 200 acres. Uh, and within those fields we have not only varying terrain but these uh, environmental structures, these conservation structures that we've implemented and we want to preserve them as much as possible because they play a key role in, the, in our farming system. So when we think about the, the, the increase in size of machinery, you know, uh, think back to we probably doubled the f planter capacity in this state just in the last uh, 10 years. And uh, think about sprayers, Mark. You know, once we were talking about 60 foot, now guys are talking 90, 120 foot. When you talk about these large machines and sticking them in these, uh, these conditions, how do we accurately apply and how do we manage those machines to, to maintain their performance and, and, and consider time? You know, we want to not be uh, spending too much time uh, because that's a, a critical component of, uh, of applying a lot of the, the uh, crop protection type uh, uh, products. We also, you know, if I've got a waterway and it's navigable, I might have to drive around it or I've got to be in this condition. I've got a, a compromise, you know, when do I turn things off? I don't want to spray, but at the same time, I've got to cover my mm -hmm. crop. And so, you know, you got to, there's a times when as a, an operator of the machine, in this case a sprayer, but think about a planter, I've got to make that decision of, of either turning uh, the whole thing on and off or, or sections of that on and off manually. And, and making that decision sometimes can be difficult. Uh, considering field speeds and the size of the equipment. So, um, you know, and, and this can happen. Again, this is just an example of uh, um, um, cotton. Um, and, you know, we talked about how much seed costs today and these type of conditions. We want to minimize as much as possible. We don't want these areas that are double planted or, in some cases, triple applied to. That's just that's a waste of money today. And you got weed pressure coming in there on top of you yeah. right there that you, you missed your spraying and your planting is messed up. Absolutely. So again we step back and we talk about automatic section control. It, on average, again we want to highlight these are just averages for Alabama. You're going to see about a 5% uh, savings or essentially an overlap reduction of about 5%. But when you couple that with the idea that I already have guidance involved, you know, that's 15% and, and we've got cases uh, that we've measured, you know, up in a 30%. When I'm using guidance in conjunction with automatic section control, there's a lot of potential savings. You think about your, your fertilizer bill, you think about your crop protection bill, it's, it might not be 30,000, it might be 100,000. That's, you know, 5, 10%, that's a, that's a huge savings and can pay for this technology very quickly. So with that, we're talking about automatic section control. Is simply put, we're just automating the on-off aspect of the machine. Uh, typically, that's in sections, as we would call it. So sections of that sprayer, whether there's five sections, seven or nine, nine sections on a sprayer. I'm coupling rows together on my planter, so I might have a 24-row planter, but I might have three or four coupled together that automatically turn 
that uh, turn the, either the rows or those sections on and off automatically. And that's based on a couple things. Number one, uh, where have I pre previously applied? You see the bottom left picture? I did a, a headland um, pass around the field. So as I come into that headland and start to turn, again, I'm not fooling around trying to figure out, well, where did I spray and, and have to turn that sections or the whole machine on and off. It does it automatically. So at the end of the day, to me uh, or to the program, it's two things. There's these savings are really a reduction in overlap. A lot of times people think about double overlap, but in some cases you're going to get triples just because of the field conditions we're in. Uh, but the other thing is, is we're not applying product in those areas we don't want product applied, whether that's grass waterways, outside the boundary, those type of conditions, we just eliminate that with this type of technology. Look at that metal slide, John. That is unbelievable. I, I bet you put somebody in there with a hoe to chop out. <laughs> to, to, that is just too clean and and on a uh, not a straight boundary but it's curved around there that is uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that well I wish we could say that that was the case but in this when everything's working properly you know these are the kind of results we plant those those uh, rows right out into our uh, headland rows or our point rows in this case uh, and you just eliminate a lot of that uh, overlap as we mentioned prior and uh, there's savings there's yield benefits to that uh, that we've documented um, it could be up to 17 percent yield reduction when I double plant you know there's just uh, those type of conditions um, exist so getting that right we got to uh, we got these inputs we got to manage them as efficiently as possible and this is really the the real one of the key enabling technologies that really shines and pays for itself in most cases less than a year. So here's just some examples. Uh, on the left side we got a couple sprayer examples. We'll come back to this in, later in the presentation but again just examples. Going across that waterway I can have that pre-mapped into the display. So example we got our uh, 263. I could either tell where I've already applied so it has that knowledge or hey I don't want to apply in these areas and when I go and and drive across that it just shuts on and off. There's no compromising in the case. I can move down and, and, and there are a few systems that, that are available today that you do it on a nozzle by nozzle basis. So all of a sudden, think about on the bottom uh, example, all of a sudden you can really fine tune where you're applying and where you're not. On the right side on the top, this is the situation that's normal. I got to plant clear out in that headland normally in order to get all areas. We don't want areas not planted. And in the bottom left, in the example, we've got uh, row clutches on that planter, and as it moves into the headland, I'm still planting, but it's automatically shutting those clutches so we don't get that double planted area. So that's what we're talking about, automating that process uh, and, and having these scenarios very quickly, uh, 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 dealing with these type of scenarios. Would this be pre-programmed into your uh, computer on your tractor that you would be taking a map and lining it up that way? So there's two approaches. Uh, some people allow you to preload a map. Uh, so the boundary map as we saw mm -hmm. in the first uh, slide or second slide. So I could preload some of the some of the systems, some of the displays will accept that. So all of a sudden you have what the croppable area is and then outside mm -hmm. the boundaries. Or the other thing that, that, that can occur, I don't have to have that information. I can basically run my, my headland or that first pass around the around the field and start to to fill it in and so I don't have to have a map I just kind of have to outline it that first pass and then I start filling in and it memorizes where I've applied. That's impressive. So so that's that's kind of the overview these are the conditions that we try to really clean up you know when I'm manually driving a machine this is a spray uh, uh, courtesy of um, Joe Luck at the University of Nebraska since this but you know I can use guidance for my pass to pass and really eliminate those blue you see some some areas where there was a lot of overlap on pass to pass so my guidance gets rid of that on the on terms of that overlap but the section control really cleans up the areas those overlaps or potential skips around the edge of the, Edge, edge of the field, in this case point rows. So you got two technologies that really couple together to get the blue uh, areas to be really reduced. One thing that we tend to forget about, and there's some research that just recently published, that we make the decision normally as the day goes long, we're probably not as, as tuned to turning things on and off, but that decision making time. 
and that can be anywhere from about one to two seconds somewhere in there again adding more overlap at the end but just because in 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 Again, if I'm out there 12 hours on end trying to get a field operation done across my farm, that can vary quite a bit. But I go over to the right and I got three section control. Uh, basically, I take that big area that I overlap down to those small little uh, three triangles as an example. Uh, that's just uh, what we're saying. That, uh, that whole area uh, in light orange on the right there is savings automatically. And it will do that at the morning and it's going to do the same thing at night, Mark. So, so, but we tend to forget about that operator response uh, time as well. Here's an example, and I think you can see on the top, basically this is a spray application. Uh, blue is uh, overlap, red is skips, uh, same field, basically throwing the technology back on the sprayer, and all of a sudden, look at that. Look at what we've done on those blue areas. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they're pretty small. And we don't want those skips, especially if we got weed control. And well, we that's a tremendous about, difference. And uh, you think about weeds, and we talk about escapes and some of the resistance issues. We don't want those red, red areas appearing. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is a, a really good example. Same field, same operation, just done under a scenario where no, none of zero technology on the top, or on the bottom, or adding the guidance plus the automatic section control, and look at look how much better of a job we do just with that. Here's some savings and uh, we, we emphasize that the, you know, the, the, the average was 5% presented earlier. It can be a long range. This is some data that uh, out of the University of Kentucky but it shows how uh, the orange basically shows with no uh, section controls so that sprayer operators having to make that decision all day uh, in that field. Whereas if I throw the technology on, all of a sudden look at the, where the green bars end up. And so it varies field by field. Every field's different in terms of size and shape, and so there's, there's some tremendous savings in there. You look at the difference between the orange and green, and, uh, and the idea here is there's a tremendous amount of savings, and I think no doubt about it, that's a very tangible benefit that most people can pencil out very quickly and say, man, you know, I saved 10% on my seed build just based on, on the technology. So just an example that uh, uh, really highlights what the, the true benefit, but the variability from field to field. The other thing that, that we uh, emphasize too, the bigger the, the machinery is, the more savings that you're going to get out of this type of technology. And we know when we move from a 12, 16 up to a 24 row planter, you know, there's just a lot more going on in, with a larger machine in the field. So uh, again, so there's some savings as, as a, uh, the size of equipment goes up. So at the end of the day, a lot of benefits. Uh, we won't go through all these, uh, but anyways, the overlap is what we've uh, really uh, emphasized, but there's a lot of other things. You know, you can really um, improve your efficiency within uh, field, getting, getting timely on your applications or more timely, and then there's that environmental aspect that really shines, and you can show that back to people and say, listen, this is how I'm being a good steward uh, with with my crop protection, with my nutrients out there in the field. Um, but we will, once again, emphasize shape, size really impacts the real percent, going back to the bar charts that we saw that, again, the more irregular shape the field is, the more savings there's going to be. So equipment options, um, we're seeing it adopted. Uh, sprayers are, are quickly, I, I don't know of too many sprayers, uh, especially large sprayers today that don't come equipped with automatic section control. Uh, primarily we're looking at boom sections. Uh, mark on these sprayers and every company, it's, again, it's almost like guidance. It's just standard options on the sprayer. We're seeing it on planters today. It's not necessarily uh, a standard option, but Looking at sales here the last two years, it's a definitely increasing the number of uh, cl row clutches that are being um, put on planters, rolling from the dealer or at the at the, uh, on the assembly lines. Nitrogen side dress units, you want to really try and focus on your nitrogen bill. Section control can really work on that. We're seeing spreaders, fertilizer spreaders, litter spreaders. You know, when you're out in a pasture, not knowing, very hard to to, to see where you've been or haven't been you know, again, it takes a lot of that guesswork out. And so there's pretty much anything that applies something we can really retrofit, or in most cases, there's going to be a commercial product out there you can buy and, uh, and put on 
on the equipment very quickly. Most guys recognize you take this John Deere 2630 display mark, it's already got section control built into it. You might have to pay a fee to unlock that capabilities, but again, it's very nominal in comparison what the, what the uh, savings are going to be, whether that's on your plant or on your sprayer. Is that about the size that, that a unit would be today uh, in, in a tractor cab or combine cab that would be a screen that size? Um, I would say there's kind of the, across the board, this is probably the higher end and, and probably uh, mostly what what guys are purchasing. Yeah. But most of the companies, too, also do have smaller screens. Okay, it gives you maybe a little bit more, uh, less cost to get into some of this. But the higher end screens are very similar to this one as we see here today. Touch screens um, and have all the capabilities that we've been talking about, automatic section control, guidance, Rate control, variable rate, all that's already built in the, the capabilities. And they're touch screen. And they're touch screen. So, but, but there are smaller ones out there that'll work just fine, and it really depends on what you're comfortable with. I think a field operation, what you're focused on. So, you know, if I'm looking at litter and I'm just doing that on a routine basis, I could probably buy a, a, what we've talked about, kind of a, a simplified light bar mm -hmm. that can do the rate control and the section control. So... Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the components. Um, you know, what we're talking about is back in the day, Mark, if you think about spraying or even planters to some extent, we really didn't have the, the ability to turn sections on. We could turn the whole planter on and off. But in terms of the, the sprayer, a lot of that's done right from the joystick. And again, I had to turn the sections on and off, press mm -hmm. a button, make that decision. You know, I'm coming up to the headland. I'm trying to turn, and, and there's a lot going on or could be going on, and doing that all day, uh, you know, you can get tired and not being as consistent. So you can switch off individual sections or whole booth, but again, all that rests on the operator's responsibility. I've got to make that decision and, and, and manually um, press a button or flip a switch to turn something on and off. And your action times would change as the day goes Absolutely. on. And again, there's some good research that, that really highlights that that's recently published. We'll talk about planters. We talk about planters. We talk about row clutches. There's really two different styles out there, maybe three uh, today as well. But pneumatic, uh, what we normally call true count, which is owned by Tremble, but that, that's basically a pneumatically operated on the bottom right there on the case planter. Uh, today, most of the John Deere Ag Leader are using some kind of electric clutch or electric motor. And that goes across other uh, brands as well. Uh, Raven has a hydraulic drive system called their Omni Row option that does the same thing. So it's, uh, again, all we're talking about is turning that row clutch or that meter on and off, okay? For those that are really inter interested in doing the picture that you highlighted before, I'm gonna do a row by row type control. Uh, going back to GPS or DGPS, Mark, we, we really emphasize the need to go to RTK to be consistent to get that type of response out of your planter uh, clutches each and every time is RTK. So that kind of covers planter. We're talking about most of the planters today. If you really want to save on your uh, front end capital cost, buy the planter with the clutches already installed. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it after the fact, you know, you're probably going to spend somewhere six to $900 per row. Wow. Expensive, but again, going back to the savings thing, very quickly, I can pay for that. Um, components, um, you got the receiver, you got the display, we got these valves or what we talked about, the clutches. You know, what we really emphasize is get with your trusted consultant, whether that's your dealer or the uh, technology provider and see what makes sense for you and what you need to buy. But you're going to have to have all this to make it happen. Most of the time, if I've got guidance, it's a very, especially on a sprayer, it's a very simple ad to bring that automatic section control. Less than $4,000, I could be doing automatic section control. Displays, we mentioned this uh, prior, but everyone's providing automatic section control already built into to their technology. You know, figure out what works best for you, who's going to be able to service you, and then purchase that, which allows you to upgrade, you know. Section control might be, you might go from guidance to section control, and the next thing you know, I want to do variable rate. Buy something that can do it all, and you just kind of grow with the technology. From a sprayer perspective, 
Most of the sprayers are equipped with boom shutoff valves. Okay, in this example, again, taking all those components and, and focus down on the bottom right, we've got three booms set up on this particular sprayer. This would be very common on some of the 60-foot sprayers out there today, Mark. And all we're doing is plugging into those boom shutoff valves and clicking them on and off automatically from basically the display. Okay, so that's kind of the, the, the setup on a sprayer. There's those boom control valves. We really have two options. Most people are going to use the boom shutoff valves uh, to shut the sections on and off. Uh, we do have a uh, cap stand and now case as uh, uh, marketing uh, the ability to do some of this at the, the nozzle level. You're also seeing TJET and some of the other uh, technology companies come out with nozzle level control. Uh, so we're doing each, every, each and every nozzle on there and controlling them. So you're either at the boom shutoff, which is probably the majority of the sprayers uh, out there, but we do have the capability to really fine tune and go down to the nozzle level. Here's an example uh, from Purdue. This is a sprayer that has nozzle level control mark, and you can see moving out of that corn crop that on the left side of that pic picture that the nozzles have turned off individually as soon as it comes and it just keeps shutting off sequentially across the boom. Again, I don't have to make that decision. You can see very accurately we're not spraying out there uh, in that. That's a good picture. So you add back in this idea that we had presented about trying to manage around this. In this case, I got a grass waterway that I can drive through. So why come in with your sprayer and drive around that and, and not, you know, kind of set up that no spray area um, when I can drive through it? And if I can map that in and establish that as a no spray zone, Here's a, here's a sprayer where we're out doing some research. It's very hard to see, but basically if you go back to that prior picture uh, from Purdue, we've got a buffer strip, and you can see he's running about mm -hmm. 18 miles an hour right there. We were wow. measuring. And so he's coming, but the, the, the right edge of the boom had kind of come over the buffer strip. He's essentially coming to the end to make a turn, and the nozzles shut off, and we're not spraying in that buffer, buffer strip. And, and impacting that vegetation that we want to see growing. Well, if that wasn't automated, it would, you couldn't be quick enough on your, your joystick to get that done. And again, this is nozzle level control uh, that's just starting to come, maybe a little bit more popular. We'll probably see more of this in the next few years starting to, to come out with several of the companies. But, you know, there's what, maybe three nozzles that were sticking out over that buffer strip, and they are not on. At 18 miles an hour, it did it for you. So at the end of the day, look at this, how we've, we basically uh, cleaned up that field. We've got grass waterways. We've been able to drive through those grass waterways, but with the technology, we've managed around them, and we've been as efficient as we can with that machine in the field to get, it, uh, to get this applica application done in a timely fashion. But that's what the technology can really do and highlight uh, that improves efficiency or infield efficiency while maintaining some of the environmental structures that are within that field. So with that, Mark, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of the same thing. Pick what's right for you and you're comfortable with. If I feel like you're the person that's really going to be the person to help me, then I'm probably going to go with your technology and put that on. You know, evaluate if it's new and versus old equipment. Um, and tell your dear dealer what you're dealing with. You know, this is what I have. You know, what kind of correction service do I have? Do I have the right receiver in place to work with that technology? You know, and what rate controller? So most of the times, most of the software today is already built into any of the displays, okay? Even the basic displays to the higher end displays. So that's not a real issue today. One thing I point out with is what's the number of control channels. What that represents is how many sections can I manage on the machine? So if I buy something that can only manage three sections, but my sprayer is set up with five sections, I'm only going to have the capability of managing three sections. Again, today, most of these controllers are up in the 24 or 48 levels of control. That's not going to be an mm -hmm. issue. But if you're starting to get some of the basic technology or an older technology and trying to adopt it, the number, the number of control channels is, could not match up with what your machine or what you're trying to get accomplished. Just be aware. And the size of our sprayers and planters. I mean, sprayers are 90 foot kind of norm and up to 120. And, and planters, boy, they're 30 foot. It's not uncommon. No, no, it's not 40 foot in a lot of cases. 
you know, just to emphasize, you know, when you're buying technology, get things, you know, if guidance is your first step, make sure that technology can work itself up to doing the variable rate, can do the section control. I call that growing with technology because it's it's just addictive. It really can enable you to do the right thing on your farm and really help you manage those inputs as accurately as possible. So those capabilities, just don't buy a guidance system on your sprayer. Very soon you're going to be adding section control because it's just a nominal fee in terms of what the pay, you know the savings are going to be. John, it seems like the RTK that we talked about that earlier, but that seems cheaper and cheaper every every lesson we go through. It gets more and more detailed, and I'm like, I wish I'd bought RTK to start with. Absolutely, and that's what most people or most of farmers you'll find that they might start. Next thing you know, next year they're upgrading to RTK. So think about capabilities. Buy, buy technology that's going to give you the full range of capabilities plus give you those GPS corrections that are as, as you grow because I might not be willing to pay for RTK this year, but next year I say, hey. Your right. value system has changed. Yep. So upgradable, we've already emphasized that. All the time we're getting upgrades to these at least once a year for anything. The documentation side, make sure they can document I know that's, that seems uh, a little bit far in terms of how I might use that data, but more and more having that documentation is becoming a real value at the farm level. And who's going to be your personal support system out there? Who's going to really be the service and support the call when something happens? And that's something to consider. So really great technology across the board, Mark, whether it's on planters or sprayers in particular, you're looking at a one and a half, a lot of times less than one year payback period on, on automatic section control. It's just a smaller fee in comparison to some of the other technologies and it really shines and really can pay for itself. So if you got a 10 year life cycle, you, pay, you, you break even one year and you're way ahead for nine years. Absolutely. And you've got that benefit each and every year. You know, I've heard, of, um, we've had some people in Alabama call it, I've saved up to 25% on my seed savings just be, because the idea of having small, regular shaped fields. I saved 10% on my crop protection just because of the technology. So next year when I go to order, my numbers have already changed. And the environmental impact, John, the environmental, you showed those grass waterways when it's not dead and it don't get, don't get sprayed with herbicides. Yeah. Man, that's a tremendous impact on our environment and water quality. So thank you, John. Uh, before we go today, let's thank our, our sponsors. John, the Alabama soybean producers, every year they fund your spreader and these planter clinics and sprayer. They, they are so good to us. And that is the checkoff. That's checkoff funding. When you, when you sell a bushel of soybeans, there's a penny or two goes into these programs. And the Alabama Wheat and Feed Grain Committee, those folks have just been so good to us. And this is, this is your money. If you grow corn or soybeans in the state of Alabama, you, you've helped fund this, and we thank you for that. Yeah, thank you very much for the support. And thank you for tuning in.